episode 173 of the Interpretation Station is called to order. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. How are you all doing? New episode of the Interpretation Station for you. Uh, today it's going to be for French, if, if you've got French in your combination. And it is again drawn from the Sunday at 6 uh, session that I held uh, two days ago on 16th of April. I'm trying to get these episodes out before the, the English competitive exam next, uh, next Monday. So uh, for the French, I chose a text from uh, Cameroon, okay, uh, I think it was taken from 2021, and it was their first meeting as uh, the rotating president of the Conference on Disarmament, so it's like the inaugura inauguration speech, and it's a speech with lots of, fl lots of qu quite flowery language, um, quite very high register, uh, generally, and that is a tip. I say this in the actual se session, you'll see that this is a kind of typical thing they might give you as your first statement in an exam to try and sort of ease you in and to see how you cope with a speech uh, full of all the flowers. And if you're new, uh, sort of newish to the whole issue of disarmament, um, I will leave you a link first to one a statement. Uh, that I did on the Conference of Disarmament by another French, and this was by Belgium. I did this about that episode about two years ago, but it's a, I give a little introduction to, to uh, like disarmament at the UN, the important sort of committees, resolutions and things. Now, in addition to that, the episode 171 of the Interpretation Station is a must-watch, particularly if you've got Spanish in your combination. A uh, presentation by my colleagues, uh, Chief of the Spanish Booth, Cristobal Osuna, uh, absolutely breaks everything down for you, uh, everything to do with nuclear disarmament, etc. It is in Spanish, so if you don't have Spanish, well, too bad. But I would, if you do have Spanish, then I uh, would wholeheartedly recommend that you go and, and watch that episode as well. That really gives you a tremendous overview of the situation. Now, uh, what we didn't get through the whole Cameroon text, so I'll, I'm going to play basically the you know what, what we did. We got through about two thirds of it, and then at the end, I'm going to come back and finish the uh, the text off. Okay, I will leave the links to the uh, the transcript, and I'm going to have to f f try and find the audio somewhere. Hopefully, I'll find it, and I'll put that in the description box down below. Like, share, and subscribe before you, before you go any further. By the way. And okay, and I'll see you around the, the other side. Okay, let's move on to the, the French then. So this is, um, this is a classic one you might get for your first, I don't know, I, I seem to remember when I did the exam many moons ago, uh, when I, well, the third time, I, I, so I failed twice and passed on the third time. But I seem to remember they, they would often give you a sort of a flowery African statement to begin with, to sort of ease you in to the process. Uh, and I thought, I sort of read this one and I thought this is like a classic one that they-, they, they, they <laughs> How would. is that easing you in <laughs> with a flowery uh, classic African because it tends statement? To be, because it tends to be quite, the delivery, uh, African French tends to be slightly sl delivered slower. And as I say, more flowery. And it's really seeing, and it's important that you just don't get lost in those flowers. You don't get lost in the weeds and you don't try and follow the speaker on whatever flight of fancy he's sort of chosen to go down. And you just keep it very straight down the middle, very matter of fact. So, um, and that's it. There's quite a lot of stuff in here where you might be tempted to follow him down the rabbit hole, but you need to... You need to okay. show, show restraint, show contention, and uh, not follow him. Uh, okay, so who's here? Well, uh, oh, hi, Malika. Who can start us off? Ma uh, Malika is here, my colleague, my former, my sometimes colleague. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, well, D Diana, are you back? You, do you want to start us on the French, Diana, if you're there? Yes. Yeah. I'm here. Okay, why don't you start us off? Okay, why not? So this is, but oh, let me just give you the context. So this is taken from the Conference on Disarmament, yeah. the CD. I if you that. have, if you have Spanish in your combination, I would very much, I would very much recommend that you watch the last episode of the Interpretation Station from, uh, which was based on a Sunday at six workshop two weeks ago, when my colleague, the head of the Spanish booth, Cristobal Asuna, 
gave an amazing presentation on everything to do with disarmament and nuclear weapons at the UN. Uh, so for the people watching on, on YouTube, I'll just link to that there. Uh, but like, as I say, if you've got Spanish in your combination, it, it's, it's brilliant, all the new vocab and stuff you'll learn. Anyway, so uh, Diana, so yeah, so Cameroon, in fact, are just taking, this is them taking, assuming the presidency of the CD, okay? And this is their sort of inauguration speech. So go ahead. So, oh, sorry, not so. Madam Director General at the UN Geneva, uh, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the ambassadors, Mr. Executive Secretary at the Organization of NTBT, Dr. Lucina Zerba, ladies and gentlemen, members of the Secretariat of the Conference on Disarmament, ladies and gentlemen. It is a big privilege. It is a great privilege for me and a huge honor for my country, the Cameron, to preside at this important um, United Nations body um, that constitutes the Conference on Disarmament. Okay, so just let me give you a couple of uh, yeah. So the Director General of UNO, who also happens, yeah. So this is Valovaya, who is also the she's the like so the, she's the boss in Geneva basically, and she's got a dual so she's she's like the director general in geneva it's called the director general not secretary general and she's also something like the president of the she's automatically becomes like the president of the, or is it the what is it the conference and disarmament she's got a, a double you get a second you get a sec, second function uh, basically if you're the director general i can't remember exactly what it is anyway uh ladies and gentlemen so the ctbo okay ah yes organization du traité d'interdiction complète des essais nucléaires uh, so that is the CTBT treaty, okay? And they will you you'll also hear that um, French, you'll, they'll, they'll sometimes use the acronym. Um, and this is the, so the CTB, that treaty has its own like organization, the, the CTBT organization. Uh, okay, so carry on. It's a great privilege for me, a particular honor for my country, Cameroon, to assure la présidence. I like how you basically just skipped assure and turned that and just turned présidence into preside this important UN institution, namely the the conference on disarmament, the CD. So you can see, obviously, you can use the CD as a as an acronym if you want. C carry on. I'll do another the next little bit as well. Uh, this one I just um, don't quite get because I don't really understand what what ah. the fix is. Ah, okay. That's why you need to watch. You need to watch. Oh, you haven't got Spanish in your combination sequence. Hmm. <laughs> so I can I can translate it, but I, okay. I because so every, be... basically each year there are six. It's a rotating presidency. Oh, the okay. CD has a rotating presidency. I think there are six presidents each year or each session. Yes. But she's four, the fourth. Ah, okay. Uh, so being the fourth at, uh, at among the, the the six presidents. Oh, you can just uh, call them the P six. You can just call them the P six. Oh, the P six. This uh, twenty twenty. This year, twenty twenty one. It's only natural for me uh, to um, to commend the greatness of my three predecessors. Okay, so yeah, this is a sort of place where you, this is where the rabbit hole sort of looms when you hear like salut le, magi, le magister, and you have that temptation to like yeah. to hail the majesty of or whatever, the hail the mastery. <laughs> Whereas you just really want to, I think, more simply, maybe maybe want to pay tribute to my three predecessors. Or you said commend, like you could just get away with saying that. I just want to commend my congratulate my three predecessors. Beaucoup d'empressement. I looked that word up. Like. Yeah eagerness and haste i mean you could say yeah with great eagerness i want to pay tribute to my three predecessors okay Can I let's say, I, I may hasten to uh, congratulate or something like that so it's too much i think congratulate's fine i want to congratulate my three yeah congratulate for that yeah congratulate pay tribute to yeah uh okay so let's give the uh, i'll turn to uh, uh um malika are you there I'm here. Hello, Malika. Hello. How are you? Am I right? How are you? No, I'm not so bad, not so bad, not so bad. Would you like to have a go here? All right. First of all, His Excellency Ambassador Mark Pexin of the Kingdom of Belgium, who had the distinct honor and 
daunting task of inaugurating our presidency this year. And it is with great determination and delicacy that he took on the difficult development of our program of work under our presidency of 2021. Okay, that sounds yeah, good, yeah. Because this is like an inauguration speech, you probably want to call it, yeah, the Kingdom of Belgium. I mean, usually you just say Belgium, but because he's like, it's the first speaker probably of the whole thing, you probably <laughs> want to give the full name maybe for these, some of these things. Uh, the dis distinct honour, I was thinking that the l'insigne honour, I was thinking the singular honour, the dis but distinct honour, Again, if that, if nothing comes, you just say be the, the, the honor. I mean, uh, what did you say for La Lua, the, the daunting task? Daunting task. The word that came to me was the solemn task, but I like daunting. Um, I've been inaugurating our president this year to a determination. And you said, yeah, with great, what did you say, avec finesse? That sounded nice. Delicacy. Like? Delicacy. The, uh, because approach. I thought that it can't be, and with finesse. With Yeah, yeah that <laughs> finesse wouldn't sound right. No, 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 finesse. I, I do say, I do talk about flair. I do sometimes talk about, you know, with, with, alac with flair and with flair. alacrity is a, a nice, I think, sounding high register when they're complimenting sort of, you know, when they're no, sort of... What about astutely? Is it not the, the same register? Um, I think it's just easier because he's already started with with noun. Yeah. And instead of sort of recalibrating the whole sentence, you just tack on another noun. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I like the tea with flair. So I, I have when they're patting each other on the back, I, I sort of use those words sometimes. Uh, go on, do the next uh, paragraph then. His Excellency Ambassador Gonzalo Melo of Brazil, a talented diplomat who followed the path set out for him by his predecessor to consolidate our program of work for 2021. Followed the, what did you say, le chemin tracé? I was thinking followed of something Followed the bit, path set out mm -hmm. for him and laid out for him. Can someone give me something a bit, one, a little slightly more straightforward phrase? Traced. Followed in the footsteps. Footsteps. Followed in the footsteps. Yeah, followed in thinking. the footsteps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like your one too, Malika, though, because if it's going fast and... Oh, yeah, it's very good. Yeah, yeah. It's concept. not wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. Mm, yeah, go on again. I'd like to thank them for their commitment, which helped us shake up this conference on disarmament, the momentum of which has been frozen for a few years. I don't know if that's the right register. I don't, Bougie yeah, Ligne. I don't like faire bouger les lignes. Uh, and I was thinking, I don't know, change the terms, shift the lines. I. Mm. Help, move, yeah, move things going, forward. Move things forward. Move that's things the kind of thing I'd say. Move forward, the yeah, progress, yeah, yeah, advance yeah, yeah, to Push further, which allowed us further. To, yeah, mm -hmm. move, move forward. I think is perhaps the uh, yeah. the best one. It wouldn't bother me as you shake it up, but you know, if, if you're an exam, I'm wondering people would mm. might quest people might question the register. To be honest, that's the one thing. Okay. Um. And what can I say about my predecessor, His Excellency Yuri Borisov Sturk, Ambassador of Bulgaria, an, exper an experienced negotiator and diplomat, his openness of spirit and flexibility set the tone for these thematic exchanges, and we are responsible for continuing them and ensuring they end in success. Okay, so just one word here, chevronné. Who could give me a, a, the best solution for chevronné? This I had a question about that. Wouldn't experimente and chevronne mean the same? Similar, but if you want to, let's just say you want to get both of them in. You're saying an okay. experienced negotiator. And I mean, so when I hear chevronne, there's, there's just one word yeah. that comes to mind. Okay. There's just an automatic word that for me. Is it seasoned? Seasoned. Yeah. Seasoned. 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 And I guess you could say accomplished, but accomplished. I, I just associate chevronné, it's immediately for me seasoned, a seasoned diplomat. They're constantly calling each other seasoned diplomats. Um, okay. And remember with the French, like when you hear don, that's always a sort of sign. You can maybe just wrap up the previous sentence and start a new sentence. Otherwise, you sometimes risk running into trouble with of with that, the sort of constructions with of which, which aren't always that. Hello, this is Catherine Rylands. Hello. Hello, Catherine. I, I Hello, was about, Roland. I, I, I was about to turn to you, Catherine. Were you? Um, could yes. you not say? Could you not say for chevronné? Could you not say uh, experienced or? Yeah, because we just had before négociateur expérimenté, and she'd said that's, experienced. That's true, actually, or senior, or skilled, or something like that. Uh, I guess you could. I mean, just just for me, so I, that, that, it, the right... that 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 was a word when I did my internship at the UN in two thousand and nine. 
Okay, and we did a text, Chevronnet, and the season. Uh, Lynn visits a season, okay. season. Okay. So I think every time ever since. It sounds said, a bit odd to me, but maybe not, maybe not. I guess it also depends which language you're going into, because in Spanish, experimenté and Chevronnet would both would give you experimental. I mean, they're, they're very, they are very, they are very similar. Yes. It's just to distinguish the two of them, basically. It's yeah. just, mm -hmm. If they come up at the same time, to just to distinguish between the two of them. Uh, so, yes, Catherine, would you like to carry on? Uh, from... Would I? Okay, let me just try then. Are you taking? Are you taking the the test? I am. I am. Yeah. Where are you based? I'm based in France, but I'm in Spain at the moment, actually. Okay. Is so, it sunny? Is it hot? Yeah, it is. It's really nice. I'm in Saragossa. It's that, really nice. North, is, northern Spain. Is that north? Okay. Northern Spain. Yeah, not far from um, Barcelona. Okay. Here in Geneva, it's been pretty cold. Uh, pretty yeah, rubbish. raining. And, and raining and the heating in my building has been out for the last two weeks. So oh, That's nice. <laughs> unfortunate, shall we say. Yeah, Man, unfortunate. Anyway. Okay. Um, so go on. So yes, I've just joined. So let me just try this. Mm -hmm. um, so we're dear here. colleague, yeah. I hope that with your unfailing support and your precious advice, I will be able to carry on on the tra on the path that has been uh, given to me to ensure that by the end of my mandate, I am able to transmit confidence and the way forward for disarm... transmettre avec confiance ah, to trans transmit with confidence the way forward for disarmament to my distinguished colleague um mrs leslie uh sorry her excellency mrs leslie norton ambassador for canada and to finish with um of course, to finish with, sorry, I'm not getting this right. I'm not very good at this. I'm no, it's right, right, right. Just rushing, rushing here. This is, this is very flowery, this bit. This is, this is very flowery. Um, so you need to just, yeah. Just. And, and, to, and of course, to finish in style, um, to our president, His Excellency Frank Tressler Zamorano, ambassador for Chile. Okay. So probably my sentence wasn't actually very good. Sorry. It's okay. No, no, no. It was, it was pretty good. Because maybe you were focusing to, because there's some, as I say, there's some flowers that you you maybe got sort of mm. bogged down over. Uh, I hope, Carly, dear Carly, so with your, okay, some fai, your unfailing, your unbending, your unswerving, your steadfast support. So it's always good to have three or four different solutions for that. Yeah, uh, I can't your, remember what I said, actually. Unfailing, I think, didn't I? I, no. I think you said unfailing. Yeah. Your precious advice, maybe valuable advice. Valuable, maybe okay. Maybe slightly better, but not, but not really anything in it. Uh, I would like to continue again, sur la voie tracée, so just like as in a couple of five minutes ago. So following their footsteps, he's talking about okay. his predecessors. Uh, but again... For, I said the chosen uh, path or something. That, I don't know. So it's that's probably the same wrong, but, path, yeah. yeah. Same so path. that at the end of my mandate, I can... Probably you want to say convey, transmit. You can say transmit, convey sounds a bit more English. Transmit sounds a sort of a French word, yeah. <laughs> uh, with confidence. The flame, so here we go, the flame of disarmament. Okay. He's getting very figurative to our distinguished colleague, Leslie Norton Ambassador. And obviously, uh, for uh, and I, I had to look this up uh, on Apotheos. I didn't know this. And so, like, in style, no? In style, yeah. yeah. A blaze of on a high note. A on a high note. On yeah. a high note, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Uh, what was, uh, and then also, so the Cameroonians also supplied an English version. Uh, I'll tell you oh. why in a minute, right? Where it says fittingly with a, f and to fittish, uh, uh, finish fittingly with uh, Frank Tressler. That's um, a bit odd. That's a good so Cameroon, it, word, it, it, though. Fittingly, fitting. yeah. yeah. To finish uh, fittingly, do you think so? Let me just see exactly what they wrote. Mm -hmm. Would it be too informative? For a fitting, oh, for a fitting conclusion. Oh, oh that's better. That's yeah. better, yeah. Conclusion. Just so you want to be careful with the Cameroonians, because unless you happen to know this political situation in Cameroon, it's, so Cameroon, actually, everyone just assumes they're fr the French speakers, but there's a, Cameroon basically got a, a a French, the French part, it's a uh, a federation or whatever, and, a, and an English speaking part. So part of Cameroon speaks English. And there's always a bit of political, um, ten there's been political tension between the two parts of Cameroon. So you always have to remember whenever Cameroon speak, it's always in the context of that. Their position is often defined by that situation uh, in their own country. I don't find this out maybe, I don't know, 
four or five years ago. But so Cameroon, it's not as uni uniform as you might imagine. Um, I don't know. So I think maybe non-Africans maybe aren't as familiar with that situation. Um, so Roland, uh, um, off topic maybe, but yeah. as I was practicing with uh, speeches in the UN repository where you actually have also all the interpretation into the other languages, I kind of got the feeling that the interpreters at the at the United Nations get these speeches in advance and really get to prepare them because there's like no stuttering, no filler sometimes, words, yeah, no nothing. So I was just wondering with what percentage do you get stuff ahead of time and how much do you actually do like without any preparation whatsoever? It's it's hard to say. Um maybe 30 percent of the time we get the statements it, like for certain th meetings we'll get all of them virtually and for others like in like treaty bodies like we'll hardly get it we'll make an opening statement overall you probably get maybe like 25 percent 30 percent of the time you get the statement in okay, this kind of well... in this kind of meeting like which is a very formal meeting like an opening of the cd you're going to get quite a lot of statements generally like with countries setting out their position, you know, so it depends a lot on the nature of the meeting. But... I mean, Thanks. for example, I was just, right to I was just we never get those. Very, we, yeah, so the right, so, so we had a reply. Oh, we just got one. <laughs> we just got one. For I wanted to we just got one, but you know, you very rarely get very those. Rarely, find, very so when you rarely. said that, I thought, what? They a right of reply, in. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very rare. It's very is rare. Is it that Venezuela is maybe more likely to send a written statement for that because they're connecting virtually or maybe maybe just you you occasionally get a bit, but yeah it's like malika says it's very it's it's rare that you get something for for right of reply yeah. Do you like me to carry on yeah uh, yes let's see okay where is it okay okay may i uh, may i also be allowed to applaud the immense contribution of the ambassador Yuri Abramezovich of Belarus, outgoing president in 2020, and also of His Excellency Mr. Li Song, ambassador for the Popular Republic of China, who will take over the flame in 2022. Sorry, that was skipping. That's okay. Um, the huge uh, Belarus, the country's you know, Belarus. Be sorry, Belarus. Okay. Yes, Belarus. Belarus. Yeah, okay. the outgoing president in twenty twenty is Excellency the the People's Republic of the People's Republic People's of China. Republic of China. So you want to get make sure you it's yes People's Republic of China. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you want to make sure you get those constitutional yeah, get those right. names right. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me uh, let me give the uh, give the floor. Why am I saying give the floor? Who 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 should I go? Back to you. Know, how many times have you done it, Jacob? Once, twice. I think twice. So, if... as Philip, maybe maybe if it's time for you. Uh, maybe it's time for Philip again. Okay. Uh, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the impressive technological progress made over the last decades are subtended by the legitimate concern to provide maximum protection and have led to a number of states in the world adopting, uh, this, having recourse to destructive armament. Okay, hang on a sec. Uh, again here, you know, again, if he was going fast, I didn't have the text, I'd be tempted maybe to just drop excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, impressive technical pro pro progress in recent decades. Okay, suit on do. Um, I don't think we don't sub 10 things in English. Uh, can someone give on me a better? Pen? Underpin. underpin that's very nice okay underpin oh, by uh, well maybe a matter of context but i did find that subpin is a rather fancy way of saying underpin i've never okay maybe, maybe yeah. somewhere I don't, i've never an idea subtended by something you know okay i would have said underpin kind of stuff yeah under underpinned i think is never is the is the best uh legitimate All concern right. to, uh, to sedute so that's a word you'll hear a lot sedute i tend to the the safest sort of solution tends to be to acquire the legitimate acquire. concern okay. to acquire maximum security on conduit have, have led a certain have led a number of states number to of acquire states. have prompted i guess you could say have prompted a number of states to acquire so-called weapons of mass destruction okay um so you need to know that right that's armed yeah. destruction massif. You don't, you can't, there's no real alternative 
the, the only alternative yeah. give it the, the acronym WMDs. Mm -hmm. um, okay, carry on, Philip. Um, their refinement, their constant refinement, and especially proliferation have today uh, are today a major concern for the whole of humanity. Mm -hmm. I should not be exaggerating if I said that these arms, nuclear, biological, and chemical, are more than ever a serious cause of uh, fear, constant fear, for both those that have them and those who do not. I like what you did there. That's good. So good mm -hmm. stuff there. Like the con the ongoing refinement. I thought that was good. I mean, I know I think more of whenever hear refining of whiskey or something. Oh no, it's <laughs> distilling. No, oil, oil. But no, no, refine. I mean, I was thinking that improve it, just ongoing improvements to them. Um proliferation are major cause of major concern. Yeah, it would be no exaggeration to say that these weapons, nuclear, biological, chemical, uh, more than ever, um are yeah, constitute. You can just say constitute or are, yeah. Um, it causes of ongoing concern, both. And I like what we did here for those who have them and those who don't. Uh, in the, the Cameroonian version in English gives for their holders and their non-holders, but that doesn't yeah. sound right to me. But having said that, so what's a, there. but what you do have is like the, the, les détenteurs d'armes nucléaires, so other nuclear weapon states, and les, les non détenteurs, other non nuclear weapon states. So when they when they talk about spe like specific nuclear weapons, you need to be able to make you know render it like that. Nuclear weapon states and non nuclear Thank weapon you. states. Thank you. Thank you. That's useful. Yeah. Uh, do the next paragraph as well, Philip. By um, setting up this important platform for negotiations within the United Nations towards the end of the 1970s, the international community had understood that the global body could, in harmony with its principles set out in the Charter, efficiently and sustainably guarantee international peace and security. Yeah, so l'Organisation Mondiale, when you hear, I mean, it's like the world, the, only the world organization. So it's, you're talking about the UN. The world organization. Sometimes, it, okay. it, it, not so much now, I think it's a bit of a throwback sort of ref, you know, name for it, the world organization. Uh, could conform more in line with, consistent with, um, the princess uh, in step with, guarantee effectively and Durably, what? Uh, or you can say effectively lasting international peace and security. You can maybe lasting turn that durablement into the adjective describing international peace and security. Uh, okay, uh, let's, uh, Laura. Oui, mesdames et messieurs. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, international security remains one of the greatest challenges of our times. I do not think it would be alarmist to emphasize the fragility and especially the precariousness of our existence. The end may be coming within a matter of seconds through uh, by pressing the so-called red button. We say precariousness. We say precarity. Precari it's an again. That's one of those. What was like yeah, transmetre? It sounds very French. <laughs> it sounds very sort of Frenchy precarity. I know the French really like to talk about precariousness, don't they? Uh, it's like, the fragility uh, of our existence. The, fragi the vulnerability. Yeah, vulnerability. yeah. Stressing how. F yeah, I don't think it's alarmist to stress how fragile and vulnerable our existence is. Maybe would be one way of doing it, but. Yeah, I mean, I'll sometimes use precarious just because. Uh, yeah, it's okay. I think it's it's not it's not great, but it's okay under the circumstances. Uh, that word. Uh, do the next paragraph as well. Uh, the fragility Fifth. of global security is connected to that of future community. The future community. They just no, no. So, so no, no. This is an an interesting little bit of okay. Uh, Destiny. You can actually just say, okay, community of destinies, and I'll give you the background to that. Okay, just, well, you yeah. you carry on though. I just go okay, the, end of the, sentence, the community right? of destinies. 
uh, illustrated over the last two years through the COVID-19, by the COVID-19 pandemic, which more than ever has shown us that uh, the, all of humanity, oh, um, which more than ever showed how all of humanity was focused on the same destiny, on our same destiny. Yeah. In let me so, so, yep. so let me just stop you there so yeah um so community of common destiny by the way so this was delivered in 2021 this was still during covid so it's a couple of it's a couple of years old right um if you if you go and search the uh, a google search for a community of destiny it'll take you to this community of common destiny community of common destiny for mankind officially translated as community with a shared future for mankind or human community with a shared future is a political slogan used by the Chinese Communist Party to describe a stated foreign policy goal of the People's Republic of China. The phrase was first used by former President Hu Jintao has been frequently cited by current General Secretary Xi Jinping. Uh, the phrase was included in the Chinese Constitution 1997, the preamble of the Constitution. And then like later on in that same Wikipedia page, there's a section that says called Usage by the United Nations. As a result of sustained Chinese government's efforts, in 2017, the phrase was incorporated by the United Nations into the resolution on the UN Commission for, State for Social Development. It has also been used by the, US, the UN Disarmament Commission, the Human Rights Council, and the UN General Assembly First Commission. So the UN General Assembly First Commission, by the way, is the one that does all the nuclear stuff uh, in New York. Okay, that's the first, the first, I think it should be first committee, I think is what they mean. So that's interesting that the community of destiny, it's, it's, that is a thing, right? And it comes from, it originates in some, uh, like a Chinese, an element of, of, of Chinese policy. So there you go. And because he does in this statement, he uses it two or three times. And uh, yes, and uh, yeah, the, the, the idea I had was bound to the same fate, showing that uh... humanity is bound to the same fate. That came to me late. I had like destined to the same fate. I mean, as long as you get the idea of it, it shares the same fate, you, you know, get something similar to that. Again, it's hard to get exactly the right word mm -hmm. for, for an expression like that if it's just coming at you uh, on the fly. But um, okay, and finish that paragraph dans ce monde globalisé. Okay, in this globalized world, uh, the threat uh, posed by weapons of mass destruction is a common and ongoing concern. As I'm not a specialist in the matter, I would not hazard to estimate the potential that these weapons may have on the planet at this time. Do you want to just do that last bit again? Okay. Uh, not being a specialist in the matter, I would not want to hazard an estimate of the pit potential posed by these weapons on the planet today. Gregor, okay, so gosh, yeah, that's what's causing me. <laughs> so in this globalized world, the threat, yes, always just okay. So it's threat pose, very important collocation, right? So you'd not you don't really carry a threat that's best in English, say threat posed by weapons of mass destruction is uh yeah, I'll often say for commune, I'll often find myself saying shared. I mean common's fine. I just tend to prefer the sound of shared, but you can say common as well. Uh shared, ongoing concern, yeah, and permanent ongoing. These are sort of minor details, but yeah, I, I like saying ongoing for permanent. Uh, I'm not a specialist in the matter, and I wouldn't uh, wish to risk an estimating the potential of these weapons that basically uh, there are so many of them on the planet, right? That's the idea. So I looked at a couple of... The, first, the idea that came to me was that, that abound around the planet today, and then I did look it up later, and that, that saturate the planet today. Um, I thought that was of the ones that I found that was that sounded really good to me. But again, I don't think that would come to me <laughs> in the moment. But it's an expression you do you do hear in what in various contexts when there's a lot of when there's a lot of something. The thing that came to my mind was proliferating, but I don't know if that's kind of that proliferate around the planet today. That's not bad. It's not bad. I think I, is, I would give that it a risky B, a in B this plus disarmament context to kind of. I think it's almost use good to word. use in that context. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, you think I like the, the use of it there because they're mm. all talking about non-proliferation. I mean, yeah, why not? It's a synonym. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Can you use replete? Uh, the one that is replete Can... with replete. Replete. Yeah, did you that's say? kind of like a good thing, though, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I don't think that's quite because it means it's like completely full. It's like absolutely there's no more space for any more um yeah and it's also like i said it tends to open is using a positive connotation and i don't think this is okay. a positive connotation uh okay I, uh okay we can do a little bit more um let's go back to Ma malika really fast then depuis les this speed through the next couple of paragraphs no pressure, right? Since no the pressure. 1970s, humanity has been made aware of the magnitude of the arms race for weapons of all sorts and resolutely committed through a series of treaties, agreements and arrangements to reduce them as much as possible. And why not put an end to them? Reducing these potentially dangerous arsenals. <laughs> yeah, I put Why not put an end to them at the very end of that sentence as a separate sentence? Right. Oh, why, yes. Pourquoi pas mettre fin? Yeah. You could do it that way. Uh, one thing I was going to say, après conscience, made aware of. So an idea has woken up to uh, is, another, is a good sort of alternative, I think, that we use quite a lot in English. Humanity has woken up to the, the scale, the mag ampleur, the scale, the magnitude, the proportions. Those are good. That's a good sort of set of synonyms to have. Uh, okay, uh, do this. Yeah, au nom du. In the name of the sacred principle of shared destinies, I would like to believe that through multilateralism, which the United Nations promotes, and through negotiations on disarmament, the world will arrive through the efforts conducted within this institution, of course, I'm referring to the Conference on Disarmament, will arrive at the goal of giving people hope and peace to all of humanity. The Conference on Disarmament contains the foundations for hope for all peoples and all nations for a peaceful and sustainable future existence. Oh, what a nightmare. Okay. Yeah, that's a long sentence. Maybe you might have wanted to perhaps somewhere split, break it up. So yeah, in the name of these, what do you say, the, the, the sacred principle? Sacred, yeah. I don't like the yeah. word sacrosanct. You can... I think I might stumble over it. I'm fine. I'm all right with sacrosanct. That's all right. Uh, community, as I say, community, there we go. This community of destinies again. Community so this of, is, of common destiny. Yeah. Uh, I would like to think that thanks to the strength of multilateralism as promoted, as born by, yeah, I think here you could be forgiven for just dropping one of those, as promoted by the UN, the framework par excellence for disarmament negotiations that the world, the world will thanks to the joint efforts within this institution, uh, the, conference on dis the conference on disarmament included, yeah, achieve the goal of uh, redonner l'espoir, rekindling hope. That's a good collocation, right, with hope. Rekindling hope and serenity, tranquility. Yeah, I think it's serenity for all humanity. Serenity, I'm always, I always think it sounds too French, but... Yeah, it's a bit, yeah. It's not. Does anyone have a nice, cut of, I don't know, capsule for that? Maybe an assurance. Peace of mind. Peace of peace mind. mind. That's good. Hope peace of peace. mind. That's yeah. very good. Ooh. Thanks for that peace of mind. Yeah, that's good. Nice. Just... Sorry, I have a question. Um, yeah. What did you say was the translation for communauté de destin? Community of uh, community. In, on to... Wikipedia, it says yeah. community of destinies. And in the translation, in the in the in the Cameroon version, the English yeah. version, they give community of destinies. Okay. Of community of dest in, in the translation, they give the death of destinies, but yeah, the community okay. of destiny is it singular, plural? I don't know. Ask, ask the ask Xi Jinping, send a letter to ask him. I don't think he's got anything big on at the moment. You might, you might. Are you uh doing Spanish and French or uh, French and Russian? French and French, but okay, Spanish because because Spanish you're probably French. because we're going to move into the Russian now, just okay, just. just just to give you one last shot, just do this paragraph here. Uh, excellencies, Mesdames, Messieurs. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, disarmament is a cross functional and inclusive issue. If the fear of collective death or simply the end of our existence are today only 
possibilities. No, 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 the probabilities. It probabilities, is, it's, sorry. It's really so, yeah, 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 this I'm guy's a real optimist. Did you know what? I'm not wearing eye specs. I should get more. Oh, okay. I'm probably, <laughs> like trying to decipher it. Uh, today, probabilities. Um, probabilities. It, he's a glass half yeah, yeah. He's a glass <laughs> half full guy, this one, isn't he? then we have to constantly set the same or ask the same quest fundamentally fundamental and existential questions what is the value of this technological growth progress if it continues to maintain uh, or to keep us in a state of fear mm -hmm. and what are all these weapons serving what purpose are all these weapons serving if they are just imprisoning us and setting us up in a situation of conflict with no end in sight okay yeah again you're adding a bit a few things there that you can um yes yeah, you yeah. can trim you need to trim well yeah bit. i need to trim more do i uh, okay. yeah, yeah i mean again this is again i would say just ladies a, and gentlemen should i have just said if you're or nothing not or, or, or nothing. nothing if you're like if you've just been if you're really knackered after doing the last paragraph which might well be if you didn't have the text here i would just like <gasps> disarmament okay. is a Cross-cutting, mm -hmm. inclusive uh, at the UN. We certainly cross-cutting. Cross-cutting, okay. Uh, cross-cutting, inclusive issue. Um, the so the, the, this thing, C. Sometimes the C can pose a problem because you don't know if it's going to be an if or a why. Yes, yeah, so as I said, the fear of collective death or community. So that's no. often something we'll do. The fear of collective death, or quite simply or, or the end of our. Dying, yeah, or this quite simply the end of our. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, or simply the end of our existence. Life on our Earth. Today. Like... Yeah, our life on yeah. Our probabilities. Uh, full yeah. stop. Yeah. And then you have, because you're splitting it up, you need to sort of start, but we must, or, uh, but we must endlessly ask ourselves the fundamental existential questions. Uh, what is the point? Uh, what's the point of you know of technological progress? What, I mean, you can say what's the value of technology? Oh, yeah, progress? I said what's the value, but it's actually better. The what's the point? In what's all the this, point? I mean, this, what's uh, the, if they could, if they keep you know if they keep us in a state of fear? Uh, what's the again aquacer? What's the point uh, of all these arsenals that imprison us? And would you say arsenal? You would say arsenals, would you? Oh yeah, arsenals. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, fine just, with arsenals. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which imprison us and steer us into endless rivalry. Um, that's for yeah for Brake steer. So I, yeah, I can't think yeah. of anything anything better there. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna have to draw the French to a close there, ladies and gentlemen. I would. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So it's back to me again to finish this uh, statement by Cameroon off. Let me just to warn you. If you hear strange sounds in the background, okay, there's nothing dubious going on. Um, so you may know the um, you may know the, uh, the the interpretation station mascot, my dog Maggie, she's a Westie, right? And a lovely dog, lovely dog. But one thing she hates is when other dogs come to visit, and we've got visitors coming this evening. Uh, a Pomeranian called Jupiter is coming to visit us this evening, and I don't know how she's going to take it. I'm a bit worried. Now, the thing is, I, every, me and my wife, in, in the morning, we take another dog, one of the neighbor's dogs, out walking with Maggie, uh, a little dog called Stella, and she is a Lassa Apso. I will show you the two of them. Hang on one minute. And then, well, basically, to get Maggie used to having another dog in the house, I've brought uh, young Stella up here to, uh, yeah, to, so that Ma Maggie becomes a bit more accustomed to having someone else in the house, because I'm quite worried about how this evening is going to go. Maggie, come. Maggie, come. Stella, come. So this is the two of them. Maggie, Maggie, and Stella. Say hello. Say hello to the Interpretation Station viewers. So yes, if you hear lots of scratching about round, going around in the background, and dogs jumping around, it's these two scamps. All right, now be good, Stella, Maggie. All right, off you go. Let's get back to Cameroon. So we got up to here, okay, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as you all know, I come from a developing country. <laughs> Can you see them behind me? I come from a developing country, Cameroon. Uh, my presence with you and in this position may seem absurd. I get, on se comprend, I get it, I understand. I said before that disarmament was a question transversale. So as we said during the, uh, the workshop, it's a cross-cutting issue. Uh, did we imagine for an instant 
that the world would become si un temps soit peu. I guess it means just would ever become. You just have to look up si un temps soit peu. And it just it's, it seems to mean like for an instant, for a little time. Maybe it means like, um, have you imagined, I don't know, for a single instant, um, what the world would become if, maybe it means if one day we were able to establish a close link between disarmament and development. If, if you have a better idea for si un temps soit peu, please do tell me in the comments. Um, I know that this debate is à court, is taking place. Uh, it is time, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, given the uh, vulnerability of uh, une grande partie de l'humanité, of much of humanity, and in the name of the community of destinies, that's our new um, buzz phrase of the, of the day, right? This, uh, this reality uh, that we must never lose sight of, it is time, I say, to revive the disarmament and development debate. Okay. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the head of state of Cameroon, Mr. President, His Excellency Paul Beer. This kind of thing's on excellence. Maybe that's that's a kind of thing you know. If you're in real trouble, you can sort of maybe drop. Um, you can say President Beer. Depends. Okay, if you've got the time, say it. If not, maybe you can drop it. Uh, Surnommé à juste titre, I think we would say maybe aptly nicknamed. I think that's the best. Aptly, I think, is the sort of best collocation in English. Aptly nicknamed by his compatriots and many others, uh, Mindion de la Paix, the beggar of peace. The beggar for peace. Um, since dans la mesure où, since the, 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 la recherche de la paix, I would say because the, you could maybe see it, the, uh, the quest for peace. You know, this is all very high register, this statement. The quest for peace, both uh, within and outside Cameroon, has always been uh, l'axe majeur de sa gouvernance, has always been the priority of his mandate. Uh, said in 2017 to the UN General Assembly, I quote, the quest, so there we go, the quest, the quest for peace concerns us all. All countries must work for its avènement, for its advent, we can say that in English, right? It's advent, it's a good word. It's a higher register than like arrival. Uh, he continued by saying, our most valuable asset is peace, uh, without which we cannot do anything lasting, effective, for the benefit of our youth, of our peoples, unquote. Uh, when you have those quotations, I mean, you can either give the quote, I think it's a quote unquote at the end, or you say quote at the beginning and then unquote at the end. This posture, this position has allowed, has helped keep Cameroon stable in a regional and sub-regional environment uh, subject to uh, the frequent turbulence. I think the best thing here is to, to subject to frequent upheavals. I mean, okay, we do say turbulence. We say turbulence is subject to frequent tur turbulences. Sounds a bit odd. I think if you're going to go with a tur word, turmoil, subject to frequent turmoil, but upheavals is generally a good word. Uh, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in keeping, in accordance with the program before us, my presidency will be based around these échanges, exchanges, maybe debates, discussions, around following three topics, or themes, topics is a good word in English, right? Uh, if you are really pushed for time, we may have mentioned this before, there's a, such a thing called PAROS, that is like an official theme at the UN, preventing an arms race in outer space. So if I was in real trouble here, I would just throw in PAROS. But, uh, then, effective international arrangements to uh, guarantee les états non dotés d'armes nucléaires. Okay, that's very important. I mentioned this before. Non-nuclear weapon states. Uh, maybe safeguard non-nuclear weapon states against the use or the threat of uh, weapons. To safeguard or to guarantee uh, non-nuclear weapon states against the use or the threat of these weapons. And new types of weapons of mass destruction, or WMDs, and new weapon systems of this kind, radiological weapons. Il s'agit là, this, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, maybe for the déclaison du 
projet. This is the gist of the draft package drawn up under the aegis or under the auspices. Remember, aegis singular, auspices plural. But you, use it, you can use, use either of my predecessors. Maybe put a full stop here and say its implementation in terms of thematic debates uh, was launched by Ambassador Sterk of Bulgaria. I would probably just uh, skip the Yuri Borisov and say Ambassador Sterk of Bulgaria. Uh, the approach of thematic debates, ladies and gentlemen, if you like, we'll just skip it, uh, may seem on défasage, dé might seem out of step, out of sync, out of step with uh, négociation classique. To be honest, um, yeah, with classical negotiations, maybe conventional negotiations, you f I find that in web, you see, in, especially when they talk about weapons, they talk about les armes classiques, conventional weapons. That's, so you don't say classical weapons. I find whenever I hear classique, I'm tempted, my in initial inclination is always to say conventional. It seems slightly better than classic. Here, maybe you could, though. You could say, may seem out of step with classical negotiations, conventional negotiations. I think still better. Uh, but you'll agree with me that the expression of the points of view of different delegations in this august assembly, which reflect the fundamental or core, core opinions, it's always a good shortcut for fundamental, of each state in the matter, is also a kind of negotiation. It is clear to us all, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, that our priority, our top, that notre priorité, priorité première, our top, that, that our top priority in this conference is nuclear disarmament. Uh, the world lives dans la hantise. Okay. Uh, I found, I think, my initial reaction was the fear, and the fear of the potential use of nuclear weapons. I think Antis is stronger though. I think you could say maybe the dread if you want something a little bit better. The world lives in dread of the possible use of nuclear weapons. C'est le lieu pour nous d'encourager. So there is a need for us to encourage, or it is time for us to encourage all parties engaged in negotiations underway on this subject. Uh, debates over the aforementioned topics will allow us to hear the voices of all regions of the world and above all to écouter again. Maybe, oh, maybe we say heed um, is always a good word in English, right? To heed l'appel profond à la paix, the profound appeal for peace. Did we talk about profound appeals in English? The clamour for peace. Maybe the cry for peace which resides among each of our peoples. I mean, I guess you could say the profound appeal, um, but I don't know. Again, maybe it seems a little bit close to the French, but you could get away with it. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have another great opportunity. Uh, that, borne by all the efforts of our states and UN institutions to ensure arms control. God, these two are really going for it. Contrôler la maîtrise de ses armes. So usually we talk about maîtrise des armes, arms control, but so you want to contrôler la maîtrise de ses armes. You can't really control arms control. What are you interrupting me for, guys? Come on, can you just be normal? Yes. Yes, I know. Very good, very good. So, which is why I said um, to ensure arms control. Imagine for one moment if we were to lose control, if they were to slip out of our control. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I take this opportunity. M'offre cette tribune. I'll often just drop when they say that in French, cette tribune. You know, I don't think we really say it in English. I'll take the opportunity of this podium. By the way, po when you hear tribune, okay, podium is the word at the UN that everyone likes to use for not really so much the rostrum, the day is stick to podium. But anyway, I'll take this opportunity to reiterate the firm um, commitment. I think we can sort of drop résolument. Maybe again, the unbending commitment, the steadfast commitment of my country, Cameroon, to the initiatives and objectives of this important 
um, UN Conference on Disarmament. I am at your disposal and I count on your unflinching support and assure you of my full dévouement, commitment, dedication pour many à bien. So often I hear many à bien say to carry through. That's kind of the idea. I mean, I've seen in the, the Cameroon version they say to complete, to complete the work of this segment of the CD in 2021. So, somehow carry through sounds a bit more, I don't know, grander. Anyway, and I thank you very much for your attention. Okay, so we made it through. We made it through. God, these two mutts are, are going hell for leather. I have to bring them under. I have to speak. Speaking of, perdre la maîtrise de ce contrôle. Anyway, guys, wish me luck. Wish me luck. Um, I'm going to wrap things up now. Uh, like, share, subscribe, and all that. Uh, links are in the will be in the description box, and it's goodbye from Stella. Goodbye, Stella, and it's goodbye from Maggie, and it's goodbye from me. All that remains to be said is that episode 173 of the Interpretation Station stands adjourned.